الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما رب الشرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام so last time uh, we, we started the, the chapter on istinja of you know cleaning oneself when they you know go relieve themselves in the in, in the bathroom the lavatory and we started the the chapter of istinja and you know what what it meant what it is um uh what kind of daraja what kind of status it holds in islam the sunnah fard we said it was sunnah muakkada so it's a very uh, important sunnah in in islam to uh, do your istinja basically because without istinja without proper purification of oneself, one hygiene, you can't really, you know, pray and, you know, you can't uh, read the Qur'an, etc. You can't really engage in different types of ibadat. And uh, continuing on from this, uh, in this in this chapter, uh, the author mentions after that the, the ways to do istinja. So, you know, it, it talks about different ways of, you know, like using your fingers, you know, this way and, you know, for a woman or a man and how to make sure, uh, how to properly make sure that every single or every, you know, uh, piece of impurity is gone. Right, and we're not going to go too much into detail of that because Alhamdulillah, all of us are we all know how to make our istinja and you know make sure that we don't leave with a trace of impurity on ourselves before we leave the toilet. We have to make sure that everything is gone. And something that the the author you know expresses or like uh, really stresses is that وَيُبَالِغُ فِي التَّنْظِيفِ حَتَّى يَقْطَعُ الرَّائِحَةَ الْكَرِيهَةَ that this is very important that you know we don't leave the toilet until the smell is completely gone. You know whether it's from our exit areas or whether it's from, you know, you know, we use our fingers, we use our hands to make istinja. So to make sure that even in our fingers or on our hands, the smell is gone as well. So to make sure that we properly wash our hands and then we come out of the bathroom or then we come out of the toilet. You know, uh, at home and stuff, we have, uh, we make wudu probably at the, you know, in the bathroom. And over here in the masajid, we have the toilet and then we have the wudu, wudu area right next to it. So obviously before, before even coming out of that area, the bathroom, the other area, make sure we don't leave any smell either on ourselves because uh, you know, uh, uh, the smell is also a type of impurity. Uh, the smell left on your fingers or wherever it is, anywhere, uh, even on your clothing, that's also an impurity that can, you know, um, you know, uh, huh? Can in, invalid salah or just, you know, yeah, like your, your wudu will be improper, then, uh, then your salah will be improper, or anything else you do, you won't have wudu to perform it basically. So uh, the other talks about that of you know what how to use it. So it's, it's actually pretty amazing that the scholars of that time they also thought about all the ways that you know to do this way to do it that way. If you do it this way, that you know it'll be the proper way to do it. You know for um you know for, for example one example is that uh, they they say that you should uh, you know if you're using toilet paper right back in the old days they would they would use like different types of stones or clumps. But if you're using toilet paper they will say you know start from the you know from the from the from the beginning and then go all the way to the back. So if you're you know if you're defecating and, and you know if you're letting out stool from your bowels, then you would start from the beginning and then you know take take the toilet paper up to the back and do it three times. Go back down and go back up. So the same thing they they, they said that you know even for women would be the same thing except that you know they, they would go from uh, I mean they, they would also start from the front you know, the, the the front private part and then go to the back of the private parts either as well. So that so that that impurity doesn't spread because if you go from the back to the front, then the impurity will spread that you're taking. If you're if you're using the bathroom number two, then all that impurity is gonna go to the front of the you know for, you know you know male or female the front private part, which is gonna you know another you know another masala another another you know situation that you have to clean that as well. So you know it's just amazing that the the, the, the scholars thought about everything you know that to make sure you do it in the proper way that there is no impurity left at all, right? But we're not gonna get you know too deep into that because Alhamdulillah I'm pretty sure that all of us know how to make that part of a stinja, and then going on to the next. Uh, sub chapter or sub category in in the stinja, it talks about the different uh, makruhat, what not to do, what is permissible in during istinja, and it talks about what's not permissible in in, in istinja, and he says that la yajuzu kashful aurati lil istinja, that it is not permissible to you know uh, to open your aura, to open your satar, you know your, your private area. So for you know for men it'll be different. For men it's from the, you know the, like the navel to under our private parts. Right, and then for women, it'll be probably, you know, if they're in the, you know, the woman's side of the bathroom, it'll be like from from above their chest all the way till, you know, all the way below their private parts as well. So it's, it's, it's you know, it's very important not to, you know, show anyone your aura, so show anyone your private part when you're in the bathroom. You know, over here, alhamdulillah, we have stalls, but if you go to a 
public bathroom, they're gonna have urinals, and if you wanna use the urinal, you might have to, you know, you know, gush for aura. What might happen that you might have to expose your aura, your 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 sata, your private area. So but it's not imper it's not it's not permissible to open that sata or you know uh, expose it at all for a stinja. So meaning that if you have to make a stinja, if you use the bathroom, you have to make a stinja, right? In order to make wudu and in order to pray. And if you have to make a stinja and there are a lot of people and you know you don't want to you know expose your aura, you don't want to expose your private part, then it's better not to do a stinja. That even though istinja is a very important sunnah, and you know, in, for, in order for istinja to be complete, you have to make wudu and pray. If 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 the fear of exposing your satar is is there, that someone might see my satar, because exposing satar is a, you know, a very you know, it's, it's almost haram. It's, it's haram according to some scholars. According to some scholars, it's almost haram. So it's it's pretty much the same thing that you know, no one says that you can expose your satar. No scholar says that you can expose your satar and it won't be a sin. You'll get a sin. You'll be you know, you'll be under the category of fisk, a fasid, right? So you know if if if, you're, if the if the fear of exposing your satar is there, then istinja, then you you will leave it out. You'll do it another time. You'll you know wait for them to go or something like that. Right? And this is obviously they're they're talking about the back back old uh, you know the olden days where you know where they they didn't have a proper bathroom or a proper you know restroom. They would, they would just be you know people going out in the fields or they would have their own little you know uh, you know maybe tin or something or bamboo sticks for for just a little boundary for their bathroom. But uh, but you know we can relate to this nowadays as well that people go to the you know malls or shops and then they have urinals and you know some of us we might want to use like the urinals or something and then they might expose your aura your private part so they end up in that in those instances you might you know your first option would be to use the stall if that's not you know clean or it's not open or occupied then you know then you might you might just hold off on that you might not want to do a stinja now you might not want want to go to the bathroom now and you know you just pray later right and then he's saying that when taja was at najasatu makhrajaha. Now, if you use the bathroom and, you know, like we mentioned last time, that if it's more than a dirham, you know, like the palm of your finger, that, you know, that, that you know, there's more impurity than that, that it's spread everywhere, now it's more than that. And that if, if the fear of exposing your satar is there, then you, you, like you, like you won't do that, you won't do that, you won't, you won't make wudu, you won't make a stinja, and you won't pray salah as well, you won't pray salah as well, because... You can't, you cannot make, you cannot not make a sinja and then go pray salah. It's not gonna count for you. But in the first scenario, where, for example, if you're going to the bathroom for number one, and you know the fear of exposing your satar is there, and your people are there, and you don't want to expose yourself, you don't want to make a sinja, you can, you can try to do it under your clothes, like you know, take some toilet paper, just try to put it, you know, in your pants or under your clothes, then clean it the best possible way. And then, and that will be that will be sufficient. Meaning that you can do that. Like if you're in a public restroom, you go to the bathroom. You don't want to expose yourself. There. There's only urinals there, and then you would you know want to clean it under your clothes. And then then you might then you could make wudu and pray. Then your salah will be counted. But if it's so much najasa, so much impurity that you know you go for you know uh, number two or, so, or you want to uh, defecate, then in that in instance you can't pray with that you know with, with that much najasa. You might have to just wait till you get, get to your destination, go home, you know, make ghusl and or, or make you know. Uh, probably make a sinja at home with water, and then you might want to, you know, pray your salah or qada or whatever. You you, you don't want to make it up later, inshallah. Is that what is that ma yazilu ma yuzilu? That your salah will not be accepted, you know, uh, when when water is available. So if you have if, if there is water, which we have nowadays most of the time, that you know, even if you go outside in public restrooms and you know, uh, you know, malls and etc. Shops, they'll they'll have water there for sure. So there shouldn't be any excuse for us basically for to not make a sinja. You know, in, in, in the proper way. You know, whether it's you know, whether it's wetting up napkins. You know, like even that. As long as the impurity is gone, that's the, end, the the bottom line at the end of the day is just being just being in a pure state and making sure all the impurity is gone. And then he talks about that um, the different types of things you should not use to make a stinja with. So you know, like for nowadays we use toilet paper. Back in the olden days, they would use you know like uh, stones or like soft stones or some kind of clot of mud. And uh, some people they would also use like bones and stuff. Right back in the old days, and then and then later on, uh, the Prophet Sallam even he even uh, mentioned that do not use bones. So 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 one of the the first things that the author mentions is that you cannot use bones to make istinja. You cannot use food. You can't use food like you know for a person or animal food or fodder to make istinja because that's you know it's food. First of all, it's going to be wasteful. Second of all, it's 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 pretty valuable stuff that you know we eat food that we pay for food we buy food. It's, it's valuable stuff. So, you know, and also it's wasting as well. So if you, if you buy out toilet paper, if you don't have water and, you know, you see like, I don't know, some kind of food or some kind of, you know, orange peel or something like that, you know, you don't want to use those kind of things to, you know, to make a stinja with. 
wa ajuran you, you don't want to use bricks to use um um is make it with it it will also be makru and remember just keep in mind these are all for back in the old days these are not apply to us i don't think so at all but we're just going to go over it really quick so wa ajuran wa khazafin you know porcelain earth you know pottery things wa wa fahmin charcoal no you know don't use charcoal to to make it stinja and back in the old days they would they would use these things they didn't know they, they would just know okay you know what i have to get pure so whatever i find you know things were scarce you know like they wouldn't and you know like, like the best the best rock wouldn't be available the smoothest rock wouldn't be available I mean, maybe water wouldn't be available so whatever they find they were like you know i have to get pure to pay salah so they would just use anything and then later on the prophet sallam, he, he said that you know don't 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 make a stinja with um, with dung, like uh, like you know, dung from an animal, their 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 uh, their their stool, or bones from from an animal as well. But he said that zadu ikhwanukum min al jinn because bones and uh, bones are the food for the jinns, and the dung of an animal is the food for the jinns animals, right? So it was because there was actually a, a, a longer incident that uh, a group of jinns came to the Prophet and, and and they told him that you know. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made bones and dung for our, our provision. So tell people not to eat our food basically or to, to use uh, our food as istinja. So it's kind of like a disrespectful in a way to the jinns, right? So not to use those things. Uh, wazujajin, glass. You know, we don't want to use glass because th this is gonna, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt first of all. Wajistin, gypsum, which is a type of, um, it's a type of mineral that creates like, uh, um, like sandpaper and like walls, uh, it's, it's a mineral that's even also in toothpaste and food, etc. as well. Was she in muhtaramin and anything valuable that you don't want to use, you know, like a nice piece, of, you know, like a nice novel or you know, uh, or something like a, a nice piece of cloth or something nice. Like you, like you don't want to use something that's very respected and very, very valuable either. And it, it, he gives an example that silk and cotton, you know, clothing you don't want to use. You know, like a nice, you know, nice shirt that you just bought yesterday, or like a nice, you know, pair of pants. You don't want to use that as istinja. yumna illa min So th this will apply to us nowadays. That don't. It's also makru to use your left hand, I mean, your right hand, unless you have an excuse, right? So unless you have an excuse, you should not use your right hand to make istinja because you know these are all impurities that we're dealing with. It should, it should be all dealt with the left hand, unless you have an excuse to use the right hand. And then he talks about the different etiquettes of. Entering the bathroom, right? Some, something that's also re relevant to us nowadays. That um, that you'll enter the bathroom with the right foot, right? So you'll enter, uh, you'll enter the bathroom with the right foot, uh, and then he says, and then you you would take refuge with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala from Shaitan, and we all know the the dua, which is, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika. Right, this is from the hadith as well. That the, the, the Prophet Sallam, whenever he, he used to enter the bathroom, he would always say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubati wal khabayat. Right, so if you don't know that, try to learn that as well. Uh, is, uh, and the reason for that is because, uh, you know, the bathroom is an impure place. So it's full of, you know, jinns and bad spirits and evil spirits. So to, you know, to, to repel all those spirits from us and to, you know, just, you know, get in there, you know, do whatever we need to do and come back out. Shouldn't also linger around too long or stay in the bathroom too long as well. And then he says, وَيَجْلِسُوا مُعْتَمِدًا عَلَىٰ يَسَارِهِ And then to also, these are from the etiquettes of the bathroom, they should also sit uh, leaning on the on the left side, right? So so like I mentioned earlier, like if, if you have the bathroom on the floor, then that makes sense that if you lean on the left side, then it's easier for the stool and or, you know, the, the, the contents of your bowels to come out easily, right? But you know it won't apply to us today. I don't. You can try it if you're on the bathroom next time. And you know, let me. You know, they could let me know or something. Let me know if you're leaning on the left side. It helps you. <laughs> Come on. But but uh, from my experience, uh, when you have uh, a bathroom on the floor, it actually helps you out. If you're leaning on the left side, you like you feel like you know more empty or more you know more more you know less heavier than you are using a normal you know traditional toilet that we have. Another thing that uh, not to do in the bathroom is. And don't talk in the bathroom. So if you're in the stall, don't talk to your friend in the next stall. Or don't talk to anyone from outside if you're at home, you know. Don't talk to your wife or your kids from, you know, behind the door. You know, so that's just a part, that's just a time where you just get in and do your, do whatever you have to do and you come out. Don't linger around, don't talk too much, don't read newspaper, don't, don't watch YouTube videos. Just, you know, do whatever you have to do and then you come out. Right, the, 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 it's not a, it's not a, it's not a very noble thing that using the bathroom. It's not something that you, you get thawab for. You only get thawab when you make, you know, istinja and stuff like that, right. And then from the makruhat, right? The makruhat tahrimi, uh, actually. So these are all makruh tahrimi things that I'll mention after 
which are the first one is istiqbal al qibla wa istidbaruha walaw fi al bunyan for facing the qibla uh, you know like if you're sitting on the toilet so your private parts are facing the qibla or your back is facing the qibla so 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 one thing is uh when we when we rent a house or we buy a house to make sure that our toilets are not facing the qibla or our backs are not facing the qibla so it has to be like you know the other way right uh there's actually a hadith of the prophet where he says that um i wrote it down here somewhere uh either at eight one ghaid فَلَا تَسْتَقْبِلُوا الْقِبْلَةَ وَلَا تَسْتَدْبِرُوهَا That don't, you know, face the Qibla with your private parts or, you know, or face your back towards the Qibla when you're using the toilet. وَلَكِنْ شَرِّكُوا أَوْ غَرِّبُوا Or, but you should rather face the east or the west, right? So that, that's something to keep in mind that when we're getting a house or getting a place, apartment, whatever, just make sure we're, what, which way is the Qibla, which way are we facing, right? For, it's for, you know, for Izzah, for respect for the Qibla as well. And, you know, such an impure thing shouldn't be associated with a, a pure and, you know, a noble thing. Wallah fil bunyan, even if you're in a building or you know like a, uh, a, a you know some con, you know constructed place or a home or something like that. Was taqbal wa ayn shams wa al and don't face the, the the sun or the moon, right? So this is for just because there are very uh, big signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala that these creation, the sun and the moon, are very uh, they're, they're great signs of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So we want to face these as well, and this won't really apply to us because we're always inside using the bathroom, and back in the old days they would be outside. So just I you know out of respect. The out of respect, the Prophet ﷺ told him not to do that, right? And for us, we don't, we might not even know what the sun or the moon is, right? And do not use the bathroom towards um, blowing wind, right? So, for example, this can only apply to us if we're like traveling and we just have to stop somewhere in the middle of the road and go to the bathroom and, like in the grass. So don't do it towards blowing wind because we're, like whatever you're doing, number one and number two, it's gonna blow back at you, and then you're gonna get impure again, right? So that, that's that's the that's the hikmah behind it. That don't do it towards blowing wind, so that, that so that the, the, the impurity doesn't blow back at you, right? Wa um, uh, ayyabula uh, and so these are all more makruhat. So those are the makruhat uh, tahrim, those two that don't face the qibla and don't put your back towards the qibla. Don't face or don't do it towards blowing wind, blowing wind, because it's gonna come back at you. And the more makruhat, more disliked things about using the bathroom. So whether you're, you know, using number one, yabul, you're, you're urinating, or you're taghawat, or you're defecating, don't do it in running water. So you know, in uh, you know, in a stream or a river. I, even though it's not, that won't be impure. Like you can actually, you know, like urinate in a, in a flowing water, and it'll go away. Then that, that river will still be pure. It's fine. But you shouldn't do it just out of respect for the water. It's just out of respect for the people that are, you know, deriving benefit from the river. Same thing as like, you know, in a pool. Like if you're in a big pool and you urinate in it, it's okay, the water is still pure. But the thing is, you don't, like, you don't want to do that just because it's a makruhat, first of all. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty disgusting and a very nasty trait, right? Also to, you know, to use the bathroom, you know, to urinate or defecate in, in shade. So, you know, under a tree, don't, don't do that as well. It's also makru because people, you know, sit down under a shade or you know, under a tree or, you know, under, you know, the, the, the shade of a building, they might stand there or sit there. So. So do not do that as well. Uh, well, hujri, and do not also do it in a hole. You know, if, if there's a hole in the woods, you might know if there's an animal comes out or a snake comes out, and you know it bites you right in the wrong place. So you know it won't be a, a pretty scene, right? Or what tariq, or on the path, you know, like you know on the highway or on the road or on the sidewalk. Don't don't use the bathroom there. But that's what people walk. People are gonna you know they're gonna walk back and forth on that on that place. And the Prophet also also says that ittaqul uh, la'inan la inain. He says, fear the, those two things that are cursed, right? Ittaqullainain, fear those two things that are cursed. And, and, and the Sahaba, they asked that, okay, uh, like, what are the la'inan? Or, you know, what are they? What are the two cursed things? He said, nas. Number one is to use the bathroom on the path of people. So whether it's a sidewalk, whether it's a, you know, a highway or a road or whatever it is, to use the bathroom in there, is that, that, that person will be cursed. And or in the shade of something, the shade of a tree or a building or a car or something like that, a house. Don't don't use a bathroom where people will be, you know, frequenting a lot, right? And that's also, you know, a curse from the Prophet You know, he's saying that those people will be cursed if they do if they do that, right? Or don't you know don't use a bathroom under a a, a, a fruit tree, you know, because people will come and grab fruit or the fruit might fall, someone might eat it. So if a fruit falls on your you know on your on your uh, you know urine or your your stool. Someone eats it, then you know they might get some kind of harm. People will take shade under that as well. Well, bowl of iman, and it's also makru to use the bathroom standing up. Illa min udrin, unless you have an excuse, unless you have, unless you have a really good excuse, then do not use the bathroom standing up because when you use the bathroom standing up, especially like you know for our toilets, since there's already water in the bowl, 
that water, you know, the, the sprinkles come back to your clothing or it comes back on your skin. So it's just more, and that's not coming back towards you, right? And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, on the, 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 the toys that are on the ground, they don't usually have water filled fill in them, you know? But these toys, they have water already inside of them. So, you know, if you, if you, if you pee standing up in that or you urinate, standing up in those kind of toilets, these, these toilets, then that water might de deflect back at you or your clothing, and that's going to be more, you know, uh, uh, najasa on your clothing, right? Adab al khuruji min khalai, and this is the last thing, that the etiquettes of leaving the bathroom, right? Wa yakhruju min al khalai bi rijli hil yumna, and you'll leave the bathroom with the right foot, right? Right? Um, so, so you enter the bathroom with the left foot, and you, uh, you leave the bathroom with the right foot. ثُمَّ يَقُولْ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَذْهَبَ عَنِّي أَنِّي الْعَذَى الْأَذَى وَعَفَانِي Right, and then... Let's say right foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I just clarified it right now. Yeah, so you enter the bathroom with your left foot, and you and you, and you read what? اللَّهُمَ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْخُبْتِ وَالْخَبَائِتِ So that means like, may Allah SWT protect me, or I seek refuge from Allah, uh, with Allah from the male and female, you know, evil spirits and jinns. And then you leave with the right foot saying, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَذْهَبَ that all praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has repelled me from other from you know harm and protected me in the bathroom, you know, from all the evil spirits and jinns and impurities, you know, it's, uh, you know, physical impurities, all that stuff. So, uh, so th these are the adab and these are the makruhat of the bathroom, which you know, I'm sure all of us are already practicing, alhamdulillah. So, that concludes the um, the chapter of Istinja, and from, from next week, we'll do uh, wudu, inshallah, which is. The main thing that we're, we're trying to get to the whole time, but you have to go through istinja and the water and what the types of water to get to you know the actual ibadah, uh, you know the wudu and salah and stuff, inshallah. So um, may Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the ability to uh, you know perform all these things properly and you know according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala you know uh, guide us on the straight path and you know keep us on the straight path and always uh, uh, illuminate our hearts with uh, with nur from Allah subhanahu wa taala and the Quran. And you know today being the the night of Friday. Try to read uh, Durud upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in abundance, you know. As much as much Durud as you read, that's the more reward you'll get. And uh, try to read Surah Kahf if you can. The whole Surah, if not the whole Surah, then at least the first 10 ayahs or the last 10 ayahs as well to, you know, save ourselves from the Dajjal, inshallah. So may Allah SWT, you know, give us the ability to do that all those, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa